Hi, as promised before, today we are going to talk about rules in SSG 1974. What are the rules? Stay tuned. Okay, in the previous video, we've briefly discussed the history of CA. We've mentioned these people on the screen and their contributions to the field of conversation analysis. And we've started to dissect the seminal paper in conversation analysis by Sachs, Shegloff, and Jefferson in 1974, or SSJ 1974 in short. Here on our screen, we have a snapshot of that paper. The paper contains a proposal for a model for turn-taking organization for conversation. In further detail, the model consists of two components and that is turn constructional unit and turn allocation. And the interactions between those two components by a set of rules. So as promised before, today's video is dedicated to discuss about those rules. The rules are pretty simple, yet powerful once we understand them. Thus, it is really important for me to get you to understand it now. I'm going to discuss the rules in three passes, which uh, going more and more details for each pass. The first one is to go through them quickly, just to get the gist. The second one is to understand the key concept behind those rules. Then, once we understand the key concept, we'll have a second look at the rules to give us a better understanding. Now, let's go through them quickly first. So here are the rules. At the highest level, the rules consist of two, that is rule one and rule two. And rule one consists of three subsets, rule 1a, 1b, and 1c. Rule 1a basically says that a current speaker in a conversation has the authority to select the next speaker. And once a person has been selected as the next speaker, he or she has the ultimate authority to speak next. Rule 1b basically says that if the current speaker does not select the next speaker, any speaker can take the floor. Rule 1c, that option includes the current speaker. So in short, the three subset rules for Rule 1 says a current speaker may give the power to speak next to another speaker, and if that doesn't happen, anyone can take the floor, including the current speaker. Now, Rule 2. Rule 2 basically says, if the current speaker continues to speak, Rule 1, A, B, C apply again. Pretty simple, right? So that's our first pass. Next, let's discuss a concept which I believe provides the bedrock for these rules. Pay attention, this is very important. That concept is encapsulated in the term Transition Relevance Place or TRP and Turn Constructional Unit or TCU. Be familiar with these two terms because in CA, these two terms are being used a lot and they are everywhere. Okay, let's go to TRP first. What is a Transition Relevance Place or TRP? The simplest explanation would be a place or space in a conversation where a turn may end. The emphasis is on the word may. I repeat once more, the simplest explanation for transition relevance place or TRP is a place or space in a conversation where a turn may end. Here's an extract taken from SSG 1974 to give us a better understanding. In this extract, the second speaker, Jay, here says, OK, place your focus on the place or time or space where Jay says OK. Jay says OK right after P says all right. Though we do not have the prosodic information of P's turn, as a person who can converse in English, we roughly can tell that Piston may end after the production of all right. The end of yeah all right is a transition relevance place or TRP. It's a place or space where P's ongoing turn may end, but need not as we can see here. 
The emphasis here is may. In this case, P does not end his or her turn. Instead, P adds one more word, dear. Okay, so the concept that we are talking about here is that there is a space, place, or time in the conversation where a turn may end. So here we have a schematic diagram of a TRP based on the extract that we've seen just now. We have speaker P and J. The TRP is a space where speaker P may end his or her turn. In that extract, speaker P does not stop and continues. So there was a period where both P and J produce overlapping talk or overlap in short. Okay. Now, let's return to rule one. So that was TRP. Rule one also mentions turn constructional unit or TCU in short. Let's talk about TCU. I believe that the understanding of this term will come naturally once we understand TRP or transition relevance place. Remember the concept behind both TRP or transition relevance place and TCU or turn constructional unit is that there is a space, place or time in a conversation where a turn may end. The simplest explanation for TCU would be any unit where at the end of it, a TRP occur. So here's a TCU and here's another one. So a TCU is that simple, any unit that at the end of it is a TRP. Or if we incorporate TRP's explanation into TCU's explanation, TCU is any unit where at the end of it, a speaker change may occur, but need not. Again, the emphasis here is the word may. So in my interpretation here, I slightly digress, but this is important. TCU is where the current speaker build or construct the momentum for TRP. Hence, it's called turn constructional unit. So if we return again to the previous example, P and J's talk, yeah, yeah, all right, here we have on our screen is a TCU. Dear is another TCU. Then, since dear is produced following yeah or right, together they make up a unit. Hence, yeah or right dear is a TCU. Okay, hopefully by now we have a good understanding of what are TRP and TCU and the concept behind them, which is there is a space or place or time in a conversation where a turn may end. Now let's get back to rule one again. Besides TRP and TCU, rule one also mentioned the word turn. We have mentioned the word turn over and over again in the previous video. But what is a turn? With regards to TRP and TCU, a turn is a bunch of TCUs where at the end of it, the current speaker actually stops talking and speaker change occurs. So here's a schematic diagram of a turn. So as a turn a may consist of several TCUs and at the end of each of the TCU, there is a TRP. One turn occurs when the current speaker actually stops talking. Now that we have a better understanding of TRP, TCU and turn, let's have a second look at the rules. Rule one says for any turn at the initial transition relevance place of an initial turn constructional unit. Okay, what does it mean? Using the schematic diagram of the turn, Rule one talks about this space, the one being pointed at by the arrow, the red arrow here. Rule one A, if the current speaker selects a next speaker, then the selected next speaker starts talking at the first TRP. Then rule one B, if the next speaker is not selected, then anyone can take the floor at the first TRP. The point here is when a TRP takes place, a speaker change may also take 
place. Then, rule 1c. The current speaker may continue to speak passing through the first TRP. Noting here, a turn has yet to be materialized if the current speaker continues to speak passing the first TRP. I wonder if you have noticed I've been using TRP and TCU so much. It's intentional. I want you to get familiar with the terms quick and implant them as a part of your habit. Okay, let's continue with rule two. Rule two basically says that the same rule, 1A, B, C, apply again at the second TRP and recurrently at the third, fourth, and the next, next, next TRP until the current speaker stops talking and a speaker change takes place. If that happens, then a turn is materialized. Okay, that was the rules. Pretty simple, right? Feel free to reach me out through the comment section if you have any question or doubt. Okay, now let's move on to the next section in the paper, which is the ordering of the rules. The ordering of the rules is simple, but worded quite complicatedly in the paper. It basically says two things. The first one is that the rules are prioritized according to its number. Rule 1 takes priority among other rules, then Rule 1b takes priority among 1c and 2, and so on. The second one is the next rules constrain the previous rules. What do they mean? Okay, let's get back to the schematic diagram of a turn. This time we have a TCU here on our screen. You see, a next speaker selection has to be done within a TCU before a TRP takes place. If a TRP takes place without being preceded by a next speaker selection, then a chance to select next speaker has passed and any speaker may self-select to speak next at the TRP. Next speaker selection may happen at a TRP but self-selection is also relevant there. The point is next speaker selection takes priority before self-selection but it has to be done before self-selection takes place. Then self-selection needs to take place before the current speaker continues to speak. If the current speaker continues to speak, it closes the opportunity for speaker change at the TRP. The point is, self-selection takes priority before current speaker continues to speak, but it has to be done before current speaker continues to speak. The conversation may get into different sorts of complicacies if self-selection occurs late. Okay, that was the ordering of the rules. That's what they mean by the ordering of the rules, as far as I understand them. The next section of the paper is titled, How the System Accounts for the Facts. I'm not going to discuss each of the observations here, since this section is essentially a second look at the 14 observations that they have discussed in the earlier section. Much like how we went through the rules quickly just now, and then have a second look after we get a better understanding of TRP, TCU, and TURN. Okay, feel free to reach me out through the comment section if you have any question or doubt or if you have any revelation after today's video. Okay, that's the end of discussion for rules for SSJ 1974 paper. In the next video, we're going to talk about the rest of SSJ's paper. They are the characterization and consequence of the model being proposed in the paper. The next video, which is the third video in this intro to CA series, will be the last video on SSJ's paper. Afterwards, we are going to talk about a bigger structure of conversation, which is a sequence. So stay tuned. Before ending this video, I want to digress uh, just a little bit, which is the potential contribution of CA to the field of machine learning and conversational design. So today we have learned a concept which is the presence of a place or space or time in the conversation where a turn may end. Noting that SSJ came up with this concept from observing apparent conversational pattern 
a naturally occurring conversation. Okay, remember that. So they don't actually just produce this concept out of their imagination. They observe this uh, regularities and they come up with this concept from observing naturally occurring conversation. So based on what we learned today, we can see that an ideal conversational agent model should be able to at least firstly identify these spaces, these TRPs, spaces in a stream of natural talk and then react based on rule one and two in each of these spaces. So here's a possible fun project. The immediate goal of the project is to build a machine learning model to automate the annotation of TRP from natural conversation. Okay, remember, natural conversation, not a bunch of clearly isolated sentences produced and recorded in a lab. How do we do this? First, we get publicly available audio recorded natural conversational data. Two, write a suitable machine learning script, spit out TRP timestamps, which we will then evaluate and refine from CA annotated conversation as the training data. Pretty straightforward, isn't it? Uh, frankly, I have not done it. I'm planning to do that in the future, but I'm still lacking coding skills at the moment. I guess a person with a fair coding skill should be able to do this, right? Okay, feel free to reach me out if you want to talk more about this project. I bet it will be a fun project to do. Okay, that's all for today's video. In the next video, we are talking about the rest of SSJ's 1974 paper. They are the characterization and consequence of the model proposed in the paper. The next video, which is the third video in this Intro to CA series, will be the last video on SSJ 1974 paper. Afterwards, we are going to talk about a bigger structure of conversation, which is a sequence. So stay tuned. See you again and bye bye.